So now we have something that's in function notation. Ooh, function notation. It doesn't matter, guys, if it's a function or it's an equation. The first step is replace f of x with y. Does that change anything? No, it just makes things a little bit easier to work with. So replace f of x with y. OK, now swap the x and y's. Okay. And then, now what we need to do is solve for y. And this is what your, if you did your work last class period, then you would get practice on doing the order of operations. And if you didn't do your work last class period, I would recommend doing it and checking your answers with mine. It's not very difficult. I mean, it's pre-algebra stuff, really. So check your answers with mine. Make sure you're following the order of operations correctly. So now, to solve for y, the first thing we're going to want to do is divide by a negative 1. You have to divide by a negative 1 before you can undo the radical. So now I have negative x equals square root of y plus 1. Oh, sorry about that. Well, let's look at this. Is this function, is this going to be 1 to 1? If you guys think about what the square root function, the square root function looks something like this. Let's see the transformations reflect x-axis and shift left 1. Right? So we know this is 1 to 1. We don't need to worry about having a restriction. So thankfully, Mr. McLogan, you made us memorize those graphs, so therefore we could easily answer that question really quickly. So yes, it is 1 to 1, so we don't need to worry about it not being a function. Um, then, what was I trying to say? No, no, you guys are messing me all up. Um, all right, so now I need to get rid of the square root. So I'm going to square both sides. Negative x squared is going to be x squared. And that's going to be y plus 1. Subtract 1, subtract 1. And I'd have x squared minus 1 is equal to y. And then you guys can see, well, guys, our function was in f of x. So we got to go back to f of x, which would be f inverse of x squared minus 1. Now, hopefully you guys should know what this graph looks like. That's a quadratic. Yes? Yep. That, OK, so there's a problem here. Our graph, our square root graph, got reflected about the y-axis and shifted left 1. So our graph looks like this. x squared minus 1 is, is a parabola, right? That, that's not the inverse. They're not even the same functions. Would you guys agree? So we just, did we make a mistake? Or now what we need to do is add our own constraint. Do we want to include all values of x squared minus 1? Which values should we include that are going to be the direct reflection of that? Well, my graph is not the best, but guys, where x is less than or equal to 0. So it's only x squared when x is less than or equal to 0. Do you guys kind of see how these are reflections of one another? Yes. No, I mean, the, the, you're not really just making up restrictions. The reason why you're only taking into account the negative values, you can see this is multiplied by a negative here. So when you find the inverse, when you square something, um, what you're doing is you're including two options. You're including the positive and the negative. So it, instead of considering both of those, because both of those can't be the option, right? You can't have the positive and the negative version. So we have to make sure we understand that we're only considering x squared minus 1 the negative option of that. And again, a little tidbit, the reason why it's the negative option is because the function was multiplied by a negative. Okay? So when you square something, yeah, again, like if I have negative, if I take, if I say like, you know, um, you know what is the square root of 4? It could be, um, or, or like, yeah, exactly. 